Coast Protection District for us. I hope I haven't forgotten anybody. Anyways, let's move along. Uh, let me uh, introduce, uh, have our financials approved from December 31st, 2022, and the October 15th, 2022 minutes. Peggy? Second? All in favor? Okay, onward. We'll move on to District 6 happenings with uh, City Council Member Marie Rock. Marie? Well, I have to say, I love when the mayor is here because I can keep my comments brief. Because I never draw this big, close, close to this big, but not this big of a, a crowd. But, uh, first and foremost, Happy New Year. Um, I hope you all had a, a wonderful holiday. I know we had some uh, electrical issues going into Christmas, um, but I worked with Centerpoint and we managed to have every, I think the very last people came up about Christmas Eve. Um, I have the person who is the interim representative. She is going to be coming down here and we are going to do a tour of the West End because it gets very frustrated um, like when we had that one windstorm and we had multiple poles just split in half, um, you know, it's like it's your antiquated infrastructure. If you put the fiberglass poles, you wouldn't have this issue every time the wind's above 30 miles an hour. So I'm working with Mays. I'll be filming Terry in. We'll be working closely with both Centerpoint and gas still looking towards the future of gas. Nothing ever moves quickly as you want to, um, but that is something that I'll be working with our legislators on as well, which is intriguing to me. You have all these people that want gas, and then you have a lot of legislators that are outlawing gas. So you think they'd be jumping at it, um, but like anything, it's never quite as fast as you would like. Things continue to move forward with the city um, as far as fixing our roads. Um, this weather does not cooperate well with resurfacing of roads because when you're laying asphalt, it has to be certain temperatures and you certainly can't do it in the rain. I think they are wrapping up a harbor right now and then next we'll be moving into the Pirates properties. We also have had in the city a uh, master drainage meeting of which I felt was not the ideal location for the west end of the island or District 5 or District 6. So we will have a second meeting. Matter of fact, they're going to be updating us at the council meeting on Thursday and we will I don't know whether it'll be maybe the convention center, which would be closer than 30th Street, or at Moody Gardens, where you'll all be able to attend and talk about what is going on with the drainage in your neighborhoods. Um, so we will be having that second meeting out here. Um, the city's ultimate plan, I don't want to steal any of the mayor's thunder, but we're gonna look at doing a bond as part of the master drainage plan, probably in the November election. Um, in uh, May, we're planning on bringing out the 4B sales tax, which will be on the, the ballot. And that probably will be the only thing from the city on the ballot. Um, Beach Squirrel continues to move forward. We know we've all been underserved when it comes to getting sand on our beach. Uh, the city has become extremely proactive. We have hired a coastal engineer who will be heading up the, um, the sand nourishment efforts and so forth. And also look at bringing in consultants when it's necessary. So we are taking that to uh, the second, second next level higher. Um, we continue to interact with Terry and Mays, um, and we have a lot of positive things going on in that area. I think we're sitting in the best position that we have ever been. 
So that moves forward as well. Um, I'm trying to think what I haven't covered. Oh, we have had a rash of, and I think the police chief is here this morning somewhere. Oh, you forgot to introduce the police chief. Our police chief, Valley. Our chief of police, he's here today. Oh, oh and we also have our chief uh, fire here, uh, Charlie Olson. Um, so see, when I'm here, I don't get all the big leagues. I just get the work of these, um, which are the people we really love. Um, speaking of which, I'm always going to give a shout out to Trina Peraza, who is the head of our public works, who has, is just an amazing guy and uh, addresses things so quickly in our district as well as around the city. Uh, so we, our staff is simply amazing and we can't thank them enough. Um, there was one other thing. Oh, so back to the crime. One of the things that is picking up, and there were, I know, four taken out of Sea Isle, is we've had this rash of golf cart theft. Matter of fact, we even went online on Amazon and bought a boot for our golf cart. Because as most of you know, golf carts are a gen generic key. But these are professionals. Like Mike, who's in the audience, they actually was caught on camera, came up. They had the trailer on the back of the truck. I don't know if they broke into your, but they broke into his garage got it on a trailer and they were out of there. But he also just shared with me the automobile, the vehicle task force we have. They have actually recovered a number of the golf carts that have been missing. So we really, our, our vehicle task force, which is countywide, right Joe? Um, is doing a phenomenal job, but I can't, express how important cameras are at your house because if you have a camera your neighbors have cameras we can pick up things in the Pirates Beach neighborhoods we're really blessed that our association does license plate readers and we had a case right around the corner from my house and this I find very bizarre but somebody came in and they took they stole uh, their pool heater and I guess the pool heater is about three thousand four thousand dollars we were able to get the license the police were able to pursue it it turned out to be a rental car that they found by intercontinental so you know that that's not kids screwing around that's professionals and they were able to recover um, the equipment as well as uh, I don't know if they've got the gentleman yet but like some some but criminals they got his bill fold so they certainly know who it is because he had it in the car and the car was impounded um, but you know we have a great police force I know uh, I'm always requesting as many as you, as well as y'all request, to get more police in the area, and hopefully that will be something we achieve this year. But I said I would brief. I never end up being brief. Does anybody have any questions? Well, you, you uh, mentioned about the repayment, and I'm assuming that's in the subdivisions. Uh, my question is, I haven't seen Angel Brothers on 3005 for six or seven months. Are they done? No, they're there. They're just in different spots. And it's no longer Angel Brothers. They sold to an Irish engineering firm. I think it's called Golf Coast is what the trucks say. But when you see the right lane close, some of that is the city. But what was out there this week, that was textile. So my question is, when is the work zone? If they're not working in an area, what's the work zone? Not until they're completely finished. And I know everyone is so annoyed by those signs. Um, and the other thing that I get requests for all the time is when is the speed limit going to go back to normal? 
I might remind you that my predecessor actually had it changed to the lower speed, but we are doing a traffic study right now to get it back to the normal speed, of which I always seem to exceed both, so I'll cover your ears, cover your ears. Um, but anyway, uh, I think there was one more question. You just answered it. Okay, I know. That's on 305. Has the city made any progress with the drainage issue we're having since the work? Which, done? which one? All the way up and down the west end. Yes. The drainage on the ditches next to 305 and the required outfalls. Yes. So they are, again, some of the crews you see are city crews. We know there were issues when they came in and they dug the ditches and they dug the ditches lower than the culverts. Um, so you'll see a lot of survey bags at different spots out there, and we are addressing that. And TxDOT is still working on, because everything on 3005 drains to the bay. So what they didn't do, or what they say they're in the process of doing, <coughs> is connecting to the outfalls. So both the city and TxDOT are addressing that. But that'll be a great thing to bring up in the master plan, drainage master plan meeting. Because we have some, I don't know, if you drive south and you see that one area by Pirates Beach, it looks like a new lake in town. Um, and that turned out that TxDOT had actually filled in an area of the ditch so they could park vehicles there. And there were, if you remember, three culverts laying on the side of the road for a really long time. Well, that was supposed to go in there. And they never put them in there. And they sat there so long, they're on Google. Um, like seriously, if you go to Google, you'll see the culverts on the picture. And the city is putting those in. So say that again. On 12 mile road, the 20 miles an hour speed limit. What about it? It's a little bit low. <laughs> well, part of that is has to do with the um, so people can drive their golf carts to yeah, the, the nine beach. Nine years old and the ten years old we have to keep safe. Right? Yeah. I, know, I, I could talk to them about it, but we are not studying that currently. But I can I can mention it to our to our folks. Could you speak a little louder? You have me confused. 20 miles an hour is a lot under the 35 mile an hour wall. I don't think that ever changed. I think it may have always been 20 miles an hour. But I have to be honest, I've never noticed that sign, and I've never driven 20 miles on that road. So I'll have to look next time, and I will share with you. Yeah. I got stopped. I got stopped by a police. So, uh, regarding the uh, work that was done on 305, um, I noticed that like almost every neighborhood that they extended in, you know, like 20, 30 feet in, because they've done a lot of, you know, damage with the work trucks right. and everything else. And in Bermuda Beach, ours is completely torn apart, giant potholes there. And well, I called uh, TxDOT and asked them if they have planned on doing what they did with the other neighborhoods. They told me to call the city. I called the city, and they told me to call TxDOT. I'll uh, get it to the right people, and that will be taken care of. Thank you. Yeah, if anybody's neighborhood, because I just heard of a business further west that has the same issue. If there is any egress, in or out issues, send me the address and um, I could get it to the correct people. By the way, they told me it's because they didn't put a culvert there and therefore they didn't have to deal with it. That's not true. TxDOT Tech, has not been the easiest people to deal with with this 3005 pro, uh, project, but it doesn't help that Angel Brothers sold in the middle of it too. But anyway, thank you. Let me give you my phone number. I think everyone has it but 409-256-4518.
Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Okay, the next we have is our police report. I see Judge, uh, Chief Doug Valley here, and I got Officer Stroud is here. Sean McGay here. So who would like to do Doug, would you like to do it? So great to have you here. Good morning. Good morning. It's always great to come out to the West End and, and see y'all, uh, see everyone. It's generally not this crowded, uh, so if I, get, um, if I get a little nervous, I'll be okay. A <laughs> uh, little update on the PD. <clears throat> I guess I was out here about a year ago, and the police department was a much different place then. We were, had about 32 vacancies. Uh, we were scrambling and, and recruiting all over the state to try to shore that up and, and get more officers on the street and we've, we've done a pretty good job of that over the uh, past year uh, we went from 32 vacancies to right now we currently have about seven so that's fantastic uh, the team worked really hard to accomplish that but just because we only have seven vacancies doesn't mean that all of them are on the street so they have it takes about a year to train and get everyone out there and get them deployed on their own and so that's what we're currently working on um, the PD has been, been doing a lot. Uh, we have, we had just the, the recent homicide out on the East End earlier uh, this week. Um, police announced that the detectives have just been working 24 hours a day. Uh, we have a warrant in hand today for the, the suspect in that case. Um, so that's good news. Um, the multidisciplinary response team, our mental health unit, is, is moving forward. We're working through the red tape and we should be operational hopefully by March. Uh, we're working in collaboration with the fire department on that. So Chief Olson's been a big help. Um, the golf cart thefts out on the West End, uh, discussed that with Lieutenant Vegas before we came in and we have uh, Detective uh, Martinez is actively working those cases. They have made some recoveries on golf carts and the Gallatin County Auto Theft Task Force is also involved, so we're, we're happy to have their assistance and we're actively working uh, to shore that up. And, and hopefully, um, as we get our, our new, new officers trained, be able to do bigger and better things throughout the entire island and, um, and shore up how we patrol on the West End and get some more coverage out here. So looking forward to that. Uh, does anyone have any questions? What is our crime rate like? The crime rate, well, if you, if you look it up online, what you're gonna find are very true numbers that we provide to the FBI because we're required to. When you take those numbers and apply them to our population, our crime rate, you should not leave your house, you, you should be scared to death, you should <laughs> never walk the streets. <laughs> However, those websites don't take into account the seven million people that cross the causeway and visit the island, so they assume that none of them are ever victims of crime. <laughs> so when you, when you take the averages out that way, I, I think that we're pretty good. I, I believe that the crime rate is better, to, you can better determine how it is on how comfortable you feel leaving your house going downtown, walking on the seawall, doing those things that you really like to do. If you're forced inside and you don't feel safe doing that, I would say um, that's a better indication of what our crime rate truly is. Um, and, and a lot of the big things that we do have are property crimes, et cetera. Well, when, you, when your PD is short, you're focused on those crimes against persons because they're generally more serious offenses. And as we shore up our numbers, we're able to start doing other things that, that will combat the property crimes as well. So I feel pretty good about it. And uh, I think our crime rate uh, has not increased a, a great deal um, recently. Uh, however, we're, we're doing the best we can and we're gonna continue to monitor it. And, and hopefully uh, we get it to where you just don't need a police department anymore. Uh, that would be, that would be nah, we're uh, not we're doing away with our crime rate. <laughs> uh, no. uh, so that'd be fantastic. Does anyone else have any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, I just have a question. Are 
in Houston, we have fire stations running out of Narcan. Um, it's just, the opioid epidemic, is, is, it's just terrible. Um, you know, the problem is you don't know what you're getting. So you're putting your, your life in the hands of a drug dealer. How much do you trust that guy? And really it's not that guy, it's the guy above him and the guy above him and what are they cutting this poison with? Um, DEA, partnering with with DEA and, and collaborating with them on our most recent investigations of the overdoses it was actually one of the first times that that had occurred in the Galveston Houston area <clears throat> where we were holding someone responsible for an overdose death um, and so the plan is to continue to do that in hopes that you'll go pedal that poison off the island take it somewhere else and, and I'm not trying to put you put someone else crime in someone else's backyard but it's better than ours and, and so yes yes are most of those instances of uh, residents I would say for the most part uh, most of them yes is there a part of Galveston that's primarily in? Uh, you know I uh, I don't want to point fingers at, at people that work in the hospitality industry, but there's a lot of, there's no drug testing, right? So you can, you work for restaurants, you're, you're not drug tested all the time, and it's just, it depends on your lifestyle, and I'm not pointing the finger directly at that industry, but there's a lot of drug use in that industry. Um, for your cooks, servers, et cetera, not, not everyone, but it does happen. And so, but I, I think you can, you can't just look directly at them. It's 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 all over. Uh, I mean, these kids grow up on on Ritalin and, and this, that, and the other, and then they graduate. They can't get it anymore, and they're looking for something else. And then it just it, it spirals into next thing you know, you're snort cocaine that's laced with fentanyl, and it's bad, and you, and you don't wake up from that. Um, so it's 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 bad. Um, Where's it coming from? Probably straight over the border to here, um, eventually. So. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Thanks so much, Chief. Really glad to have you here. Thank you. Okay, next we're going to hear about the Gulf Coast Protection District, Sally Baco. This is the Ike Dyke. So. Good morning, Sorry, sir. Good morning. I don't mean to steal Sally's thunder, but uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Butch Stroud. I'm the city marshal. And uh, the news I want to bring is Bill Hare has retired, and those that haven't heard of that, and that was your code enforcement investigator out here. Uh, he gave 22 years of his life to the city of Galveston and, and decided it was time to move on. So with that being said, your new code enforcement officer is Nick Ely. Uh, I so, for a little bit, but I don't want to Bill Thunder either. Uh, Nick brings a different uh, vision to the to the West End. Uh, he's trying to pick up, and he's got some big shoes to fill with Bill. Bill's an icon out here. Uh, I think Nick's going to do an outstanding job for y'all, and uh, he will be your contact uh, with the marshal's office. If you, if you have any any issues, Nick is going to be the guy you're going to see from now on. He's hard to miss. Uh, he's, he'll be in a, in a big four-wheel drive Ford truck. <laughs> so he, he'll stick out. You'll, you'll see him around. Anybody have any questions about that? How do we contact Nick? 
the same way you contacted Bill. Okay. Exactly the same. Which, uh, is? which is you can call 409 797 3647. That's the Marshal's Office uh, phone number. And, or you can go online to our uh, portal and file your complaints online. Uh, that way it gets to everyone and, and we make sure that the complaints are heard. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Sally, here we go. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sally Baco. I'm the Director of Policy and Governmental Relations for the City of Galveston. And I'm here this morning in my capacity as Board Director for the Gulf Coast Protection District to give you an update on recent events with, going on with the district. Um, happy New Year, and oh, what a happy New Year it is because the Water Resources Development Act of 2022 passed Congress and was signed by the President. That legislation authorizes the Coastal Storm Surge Protection System project that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers studied for those several years, also known as the Ike Dike. And um, so we're very excited about that. But as you recall from my previous briefing, the authorization is not funding. So, but you can't get funding without authorization. So this was a really critical step. But here's even better news. Um, as you all know, the 88th Texas Legislature started uh, January 10th. They convened January 10th this past week. Um, House Appropriations Committee Chairman Greg Bonin and uh, Senate Finance Committee Chair Joan Huffman introduced HB1 and SB1. These are the base budget bills that the legislature will consider, hold hearings on, pass. It's the one bill that they must pass, and that's the state budget. And included in each of those bills is $500 million for the Gulf Coast Protection District. 200 million of that will go towards the non-federal share requirements for the storm surge protection system. I can't tell you how important this is. While we still have a ways to go because the legislature hasn't finished their work, this is a significant signal to the feds that the state of Texas sees this project as a economic supply chain protection priority as an ecosystem priority, as a beach management priority. And that signal means that we have something to really talk about in DC when uh, we go up, we have a trip planned for February 1 and 2nd to go up and meet with the Office of Management and Budget, to meet with the US Army Corps of Engineers, and to meet with congressional offices. So, we are very, very encouraged by this. The uh, Galveston District and the Southwestern Division of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is working very closely together to put together a detailed budget for the Coastal Storm Surge Protection System, the first infusion of money, which they are requesting $600 million. This would be uh, to get us through the pre-construction engineering design as quickly as possible, because as they say, when, once you get into construction, that's when the money spigot really tends to open up. So um, what we're hopeful for and what we're hearing good signals about is there may be access to a uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill. This is the um, Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act that passed uh, a couple of years ago um, that we might have access to the bucket of money that the core received from that legislation. And if that's the case, then we will have our non-federal share in place for whatever monies that we're able to draw from that federal legislation. So this is significant news, significant movement for this project. And we're, we're very <coughs> grateful to um, our legislators. We're very grateful to our congressional delegation and the members of the community that have for a very long time supported this project. And let me just say, 
This is huge for the west end of Gallison because this is a 65-35, 65 Fed, 35 non-federal that will construct the dune and expanded beach system. And then from there on, a six year beach renourishment, beach maintenance, every six years, 50-50, Fed, 50 non-federal. So to have the state step up and recognize this project as a priority is, it's just not, it, this, it, this is, it just doesn't get any better than this. Okay. Yeah, so, but it would be paid for. <laughs> it, it, it really, once we get into that core maintenance, I mean, it just really doesn't get any better than this because your beach renourishment, you're not, you're not necessarily having to chase competitive grants anymore. And so we're real happy about that. Um, just uh, to also fill you in, the Galveston District told us about um, they are looking to fill a scheduler position that's going to be specific to um, this project, and this is going to be important. I've been working very closely with Council Member Rob um, because what we want to do is get the beach and dune system and the sequencing moved up. And the Corps is going to be very uh, motivated to do that because with all of this money the Galveston District is going to be getting, they're going to have to demonstrate capacity that they can expend these funds. And the beach and dune system is an aspect of this project that can happen at a much faster pace than obviously the, the gate systems and, and things of that nature. So um, we will have to go through sand sourcing, we will have to go through uh, supplemental environmental, but we, the, the schedule that, that they bring on board, we will be working very closely so that we can be assured of moving the beach and dune system up in the sequencing and have that moving as quickly as possible. Um, the next uh, GCPD board meeting is on February 8th. It will be in Seabrook at the Bay Area Community Center, but I always uh, provide information to Jerry so that um, if you would like to live stream uh, the meeting, you can do so, and also you can always visit our website at www dot gcpdtexas.com and can I answer any questions? Yes ma'am. Are they ever going to reconsider any of the I think that that is under, that is always, there's always opportunity for discussion because what will happen now that we have um, funding possibly on the horizon GCBD is going to be organizing community groups to provide discussion and input as we go through each aspect of um, this project. And so I don't want to say there isn't any, that nothing can be put on the table. Um, at this point, the core's focus is going to be what Congress authorized. So anything beyond that would be a local option, local preference type of thing where financing and funding would have to come outside of that federal pot of money. So it, it would be an added cost, and we'd have to you know, consider that, but clearly we want community input you know, on that aspect, because I know there was a lot of work done by Dr. Merrill and Texas A&M in studying that. Yes, sir. Uh, do you have any kind of an educated guess as to you know, potential for when the, the dune systems and renourishment on the west end might happen in terms of like you? Okay, yeah. Um, I, I, I can't say educated, but I can give you an estimated time. <laughs> um, best guess. Best guess, yeah. We have, the court has put out a, a sequencing of events, and what they've said is sand sourcing could take up to a year. A supplemental environmental could take up to two to possibly three years. Okay, um, obviously that's what they're saying now. We will be taking a closer look at that as we get into sequencing. Obviously, we are going to be working very closely with the core on this. And uh, one other point I wanted to add, and this isn't specific to your topic, sir, but it is important. The um, Gulf Coast Protection District is going to be reviewing, hopefully sometime soon, a memorandum of understanding with the Corps for in-kind work. 
And this is key because right now we have beach renourishment activity that Council Member Rob has been working on very hard with uh, the GLO and uh, in discussions with Commissioner Buckingham. And what we want is to have our memorandum of understanding for in-kind work in place so that we can count that as in-kind work towards efforts with the beach and dune system as part of the, the, the larger project. So are those two separate programs, the beach nourishment versus the Yes, sir. Yeah, one, the, the Gulf Coast Protection District is the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Storm Surge Protection System project, and then Council Member Rob can tell you so more I about it. So I'd three, four years away before they actually start construction. Well, no, well, there's parts of the there's parts of the coastal surge protection that are actually happening now in Orange and other places that were further along. But to your question about the beach and the sand, we are actively working with the GLO right now and the Corps as well because everyone knows it's a priority to get sand on the west end. So we have. We are not waiting for the coastal surge protection, which is why what Sally just said is key, and, and we've been working on getting that interlocal agreement between the district and the uh, GLO, because anything that's done before that counts as in kind, and we are not waiting. We are moving forward. So what's the, what's the kind of timeline is on the beach for you? I would say two to, at worst, three years. So what, you know, I, I mean, you walk up and down the beach, I live in Bermuda Beach, you know, and so we're looking three hurricane seasons away. I, I mean, I hope started. not. We're, we're addressing it as quickly as we can. Uh, we know that we've made, uh, that it, 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 we will be getting the, the, uh, intercoastal dredging will move further west um, in 2025 which will be beach on the sand and at that point we may actually look at private public partnerships to get a dune in place the GLO can put the sand or the and the Corps can put the sand um, let's just say there's a number of things that are happening and everyone is well aware that we can't make it through multiple hurricanes. I mean, we have been blessed. Um, well, your neighborhood in particular, I mean, there's at least 25 beachfront homes that are in Oh, no, we can't keep losing roads and streets and infrastructure. Um, we have the, the Rivieras and the Grands, that's in critical shape right now. Um, and the GLO, I mean, Seriously, it, we work with them on close to a daily basis. So I can just say a lot's going on, and we will be releasing it as it happens. Well, um, is this, you know, this was one of my questions maybe for the mayor or whoever, you know, but is the city looking to try to be obstructive on these projects? Because I've heard, you know, anecdotally, you know, they've been very difficult to deal with getting permits, getting, you know, I've heard stories about the Riviera where they wouldn't let them sure up that building. Well, let's just say, like I think we're on, we're on, we have a new dawn at the GLO <laughs> in more than one way, and I think that's going to make a huge difference. So, yeah. I like that. <laughs> right. So, when we, when you come out for a coastal permit, the GLO makes us follow those rules. Those aren't our rules. So, so we have to enforce those rules or they will cut off any money that you would have coming from the beach. So that's why we have to do that. We can't just ignore the GLO's rules as much as we may want. And, and let me just add one more comment to your question. Uh, and that they, is, they kind of point the fingers back both, both ways. There was a I've been you just want to right. right. We do. They do. I mean, that's, that's why we hire, you know, elect city councils and so on and so forth and people in charge at, at the city for, so that you can fight the GLO for us because all we're trying to do is protect our homes. I mean, it's pretty simple, you know. Well, that's exactly right. That's why the city is so, that's why we follow their rules though because 
we, there's no way that this tax base could support re-nourishing that beach, putting dunes out there, and all the things that everybody wants. So we have to follow the GLO's rules because they hold the money. The feds give them the money. They don't give us the money. Yeah, well, what, what about people that aren't asking for money, private private projects that are just trying to protect their property that the city is instructed? But, but you also, the, the GLO, and, and, the, you your can't do anything. You can be a detriment to your neighbor's property or to the beach or to the other projects that they're doing. I'm not going to try to even rationalize how the GLO arrives at things, uh -huh. but I will tell you that they hold us hostage on most of these things. And I'm hoping, as is Council Member Rob, for a massive change at the GLO uh, to try to remedy some of these things. But we're in such a precarious situation. I mean, understand, they control 100% of the beach money. So if, if we, and they have, and trust me, the GLO's not shy. They, they've cost us millions and millions of dollars over these, he said, she said things already. So we have to make sure that we follow their rules so please don't get upset with Russell and the guys in coastal plain management who are trying to enforce all of these rules. And keep in mind, we send stuff to the GLO every day. And when it comes back, hey, you know, that's the thing. And we fight it every day, just like you do. Well, thank you. Well, I just want to take my, put my city hat on for just a second and extend our sincere thanks to Representative Julio Wilson she is supportive of a legislative request we are making with regards to beach access plan amendment reviews uh, with the GLO such that it makes the beach access plan an, a livable document. You know, if you have some minor non-compliance in one geographic area, it's not shutting down your entire plan and making adjustments to your plan in other areas that are of critical need like for example where significant erosion has occurred so we're very thankful for her interest and her support and her willingness to file that bill because um, she is working on the house side for that and senator middleton is going to be working on the senate side for that so we're very grateful for their representation and their support and with that i said oh yes sir this is just one is the ike dyke dune system does, do they envision a g2 reinforced dunes um, we are working on that, and we are working on that. Let me let me let me clarify two things. When you talk about Ike Dyke, it is not just the dune system; it is a multi-tiered defense system against storm surge. So that includes the large gate system across the mouth of the bay. It includes the seawall improvements. It includes the dune system. So let me say that first. Secondly. We, right now, what the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has developed and Congress has authorized has been a double dune system um, that's all sand. The, GCP do, the GCPB board is questioning that, okay? They're like, that doesn't make any sense because if what happened in Louisiana happens here, five storms over a 13 month period, two, six weeks apart, 12 miles apart, a double dune all sand system isn't gonna do squat for anybody. So we, are, we have been talking to the Corps about our ability to go in and reinforce those dunes. We want um, you know, an, as environmentally friendly reinforcement as possible, but we want effective reinforcement. And that's what we're going to be looking for, and that's what we're going to get. So, um, you know, right now what we're looking at is getting the money for what's been authorized, and we will address the, the fortification of those students. Yes, sir. I understand the harbor pilots were too fond of the initial design from the fall of the road gate system. Is that something to take a look at again? Yes, sir. Um, I have not been involved in those conversations, but our board president, Mayor Michelle Bechtel of Morgan's Point, has been actively engaged with the pilots on that. In fact, I think he sits on their board as well. But um, yes, they are working very closely with the pilots on that. We are trying to um, look at what their concerns are, and they will be actively engaged as we get into the design <coughs> aspects of this. You have to remember, the Coastal Texas study was a 30% feasibility study. I mean, it's 30% designed, you know, thought out. There's a lot of work that still has to go on with that gate system with regards to design and engineering. 
and we're going to be partnering with the pilots to ensure that we have their concerns addressed and that it balances well with what Congress authorized and expects of the Corps in, in producing this project. Any? Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Sally. And one more report, and that's from the Beach Maintenance Advisory Committee of the Galveston Parks Board of Trustees, and this will be Craig Mann. All right, thank you, Jerry.